Hi, it's Machine Dana and welcome to the channel. This is a video all about how you can get to 50 viewers, get to affiliate status on Twitch as quickly as possible, but how to do it in an organic way, in an honest way, in a genuine way, and in a way that's gonna make sure that you retain high viewerships throughout that period and hopefully build a really strong foundation uh, for pushing forward and continuing really good, positive, solid, genuine growth for your Twitch channel. I've actually only been streaming for a little over two months. And I'm nearly at 100 followers already. And now that might not seem very much at all when you're probably on this channel thinking, why is he giving out advice at this stage? That is significantly above average, um, but also when you look at the viewership that I've had during that period, it is also pretty good as well. People have done better, so there are other people out there that can give advice also, but I want to give my thoughts because I feel like I've done a pretty good job of what I have done so far, and I get a lot of very positive feedback. If you do enjoy this video, if you find it useful, please do thumbs up the video because it helps the visibility for other people that are new to Twitch chasing the affiliate status. And also, if you want to see more content, some tips, some tricks, some guidance, and various other bits and pieces, I do upload quite a lot of videos surrounding Streamlabs, surrounding Twitch and streaming in general. So feel free to hit the subscribe button if you would like to. I also stream most days, five or six days a week at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. So I'll stick a link for that in the description and hopefully on screen somewhere now as well. Um, so yeah, in this video, I'm just going to be going through some really, really casual guidance, tips and tricks, some very honest feedback um, about what you can do, some constructive uh, things that you can do to make the stream stick and to make the stream um, sort of go, go well for you and to feel like you're not going to end up kind of streaming for months and months and months on end to virtually nobody. Within a very short space of time, even within the first few days, I, I was not really streaming to sort of no people. There was always at least one or two people on the stream, no matter what happened. And I was quite surprised at that I took I kind of took my own kind of expectations by surprise have read horror stories on reddit of people that have streamed to you know one two three people for years before they got any kind of traction whatsoever so I thought I'd provide a little bit of of insight if you look at also the percentage of viewership that I have in comparison with the number of followers um, mine's very high by by the percentages as well. So I, th I think it's worthwhile me giving my thoughts and some people might find this useful. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm gonna break this down into broadly three sections. Uh, the first section is what to do before you start streaming and kind of as a precursor to streaming. Uh, the stuff to do in the early days when you first start streaming and then the stuff that you can do once you've hit affiliate and just to make sure that you kick on uh, to continue to build on, on the foundation that you've built for yourself. Before going live, the main things that you want to be doing is to make sure that you get the fundamental things absolutely spot on and, and as correct as you can be. Now, a certain level of experience will come with doing more and more streams, but you can counter some of the lack of experience with just a little bit of testing, a little bit of common sense, and by getting some of your friends in to actually test some of these things with you. So there's absolutely no harm in asking your friends for feedback, asking family members for, for some help. The fundamental things that you do absolutely need to get correct are the audio. You want to make sure that your voice audio is at least 20 or 30% higher than the game's audio is, so that your broadcasting is really, really clear, but the user also needs to be able to clearly hear what is going on in the game or in whatever it is that you are doing on the stream too. So there's a fine balance there. If you watch back your own test streams and test recordings, and you can record in most of the uh, streaming software, for example, Streamlabs OBS. So if you, if you record on those and you find that you can't quite hear the gaming audio, you need to tweak the gaming audio up. Or if you record on those and find you can't quite hear yourself, or you may be struggling to hear a few words, maybe you need to tweak up your own audio. You know, do research on how to set the right audio settings for gain and balancing and various other settings. I'll link a few good resources on that in the description below to help you with setting up the audio. But getting the audio correct is, is really, really quite a fundamental thing. The other thing is you don't overstretch your computer. Um, there's an NVIDIA article, which I'll also link below, which gives you some really good, good advice on what sort of frame settings you should be doing, pixel uh, settings you should have based on your internet, based on your graphics card and various other things. It's a really, really good article. And I found when I 
literally considered every single setting in that NVIDIA article, I was able to, to make quite a significant improvement to the fundamental setup of the stream, the technical setups of the stream. And it explains it in a quite a simple way as well. So it's really useful for beginners. I was quite surprised I got quite a lot of like compliments in the early days of how good my stream was. Um, I did not expect that at all. I'm a fairly, I'm generally a fairly modest guy. I didn't expect to be getting compliments so early on. And some of these people who had uh, 500,000, 5,000 followers were telling me that they did like the quality of what I was doing. And it's it's not because I'm some sort of genius at it, it's purely because I've re done the research, looked at the articles, tested a lot with friends, and that's a really, really important part. There's not much more to go through about the pre stream stuff so before you start streaming but just make sure that the audio and the visual stuff are both correct you can add a load of extra fun stuff to the stream as you go along you don't need to get everything perfect from the very very start and i think people will appreciate that you may be a new streamer and it's best to be upfront about that you don't need to worry too much and sweat the small stuff in the early days i came into this thinking I need to get everything perfect from day one and very quickly realize that there's so much there's so much you can do uh, that actually it's impossible to get it perfect from day one I, th I think it's probably impossible to get it perfect full stop but you can start to get it closer and closer to how you want it over a more longer period of time so what i started doing is one day i would address a certain thing and then the following day i'd address something else and it might be branding and then something else and something else so rather than trying to break my back and get it all done in one go uh, that's what i did so we'll get onto stuff that you do while whilst you're actually streaming that can help you get through the 50 follower mark. Most people tend to get the other things quite easily, the, the viewership uh, percentage, the, the actual number of people on average watching being over, over three. Actually, let's just quickly get that up on screen. Uh, I'm sure you probably already know this anyway, but the path to affiliate, you need 50 followers, stream for eight hours within a 30 day period, stream for seven seven different days within the period and an average of three viewers. But we're looking at that and thinking, well, that's quite a lot of different things to do in a 30 day period. All Twitch and Amazon are really trying to do with this are to say, look, this person's committed to it. Um, we, we want to give them some small hurdles to get over before they start to take it a bit more serious and before we relinquish some of the revenue because that's ultimately what Twitch and Amazon do. They relinquish some of the advertising revenue and they open up multiple sources of income uh, streams and they, obviously they tie you into agreements for that uh, benefit as well. They want to know that you're actually starting to be committed to it. And if you do a one hour stream and get five followers and you never touch it again, it's a bit of a waste of their time, a bit of a waste of their resources. And in a way it sort of undermines the other people that are committed to it and the people that are taking it a little bit more seriously and, and really do want to stick it out and, and, and do it for the long term if they're giving out that affiliate status to kind of anyone. And don't get me wrong, there are people that can just get, you know, 50 followers very easily using follow for follow schemes or using networking tools. I tend to believe that the follow for follow and begging for followers and all that kind of stuff is, first of all, it's a bit unauthentic. I think it undermines your own credibility if you're doing those things. Um, your self-belief should be that, that actually your own entertainment value should be enough to pull in enough followers to grow the channel at a steady and organic rate. And if you're having to do things that, that, that accelerate that unnaturally, for example, following someone just purely so that they will follow you back, it seems not a very good thing to do. And I personally, and I'll go into this a little bit later, I think it hurts the algorithm when you've got a high percentage of people that are following you, but are not actually viewing what you're doing. Uh, and that can actually hurt you in the long run, directly hurt your searchability on which the, the platform. So that's what you've got to do um, to get there. And the average of three views is relatively easy to hit. The main one is normally getting the actual followers themselves. That's if you're not going out of your way to just kind of pour yourself out and, and beg for likes and things like that. So now that we know exactly what it is that you've got to do to get to affiliate status, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the things that I did that I think helped me along the way. So at this point, I'm going to show some of the statistics that I've uh, kind of achieved in the period of time whilst, whilst I was streaming. As I said, the first stream that I did was on the 9th of May and by the 30th of June, I'd hit the affiliate status. So it's around about six or seven weeks that it took me. Again, I wasn't going out of my way to like beg for followers or follow for follow or any of that rubbish. I, I just don't think it would have worked or helped for the channel. Um, so here we look at average viewers um, straight from the, the get-go because I had some friends 
uh, one or two friends that said that they were tuning in as well and also I had one of my own devices tuned in that allowed me to at least be seen as having one or two viewers in the early stages this is the average viewership and as you can see just steadily steadily goes up on the whole if you sort of moving that out it does steadily go up and towards the end as I was starting to get a bit more traction with some of the other people that were regular viewers um, it became a little bit more interactive in the stream and that kind of um, sort of self compounds itself I would say so I think the, the highest average I had during the period was um, actually, funnily enough, it was the stream where I did get affiliate status, 7.9 average viewers. But even before that, I'd hit 6.6 .6 average, 3.8. A few times I'd hit 5.8, 7.4. So I was regularly starting to push pretty good high viewerships. Talking about followers, um, I had a, a flurry of followers in the early stages. Some of those, three or four of those will have been like family or friends, but most of the rest were literally just people that have found the channel in various ways. Um, in terms of searchability, I did play a variety of different games during that period, but I, I, I played games that I enjoyed playing. I wasn't trying to like beat the algorithm. I wasn't trying to search for, you know, things that were just particularly popular or niche games or anything. I was playing games that I wanted to play because I knew that I could make them the most entertaining. And also I knew that I would enjoy it the most. You know, it wasn't really a means to an end. This for me is a hobby for gaming, but it's also a hobby doing this, the, the, the Twitch streaming. It doesn't really feel like a hobby if you're playing games that you don't want to play. And actually you're gonna be less entertaining if you're playing games only for the purpose of trying to get followers. It doesn't really work that. I don't think it works. A lot of the big streamers um, or, or most of the big streamers do play games that they actually are very good at or they enjoy or both. Uh, very few big streamers are, are just continually grinding out games that they absolutely hate or games that they're not very good at just for the sake of getting followers. It's just not how it works. So that's, I mean, one really key bit of advice there is definitely play games that you want to play or games that you're very good at or both ideally. So, um, and, and I went through a few periods where um, there was certain periods where I got kind of high average viewerships and certain games just allowed me to get more followers than others. One day I got seven followers, some days where I got three and four followers, but steady along the way. One thing to note here, and this is, this is one of the kind of bits of guidance is, I streamed 210 hours during that period. A lot of the guidance I see out there is don't stream a lot, you know, make sure that you're actually building content off the site and so on. And whilst it's important to be doing other things like social media and all that kind of stuff, you still have to be on the site. You still have to be shown to be regular. I think it's really important, especially in the early days, that you're getting in people's spaces, getting out there, playing as much time as you can. So every time you're gaming to enjoy your games, switch on the stream and entertain some other people as well. And there's no harm in doing that. So that's something to take into account and kind of goes against the grain a little bit of what the advice tends to be here. A lot of people say, oh, only, you only need to stream two or three times a week. You can stream two or three times a week and that can work. I'm not saying it won't work. I'm saying that hard work and streaming a lot of time will also benefit you in certain ways if you are doing it in the right way. So I streamed a lot of time during this period, 210 hours to stream to get to uh, 50 followers is a lot of time. I mean, that's, we'll get the calculator out. It's like, it's like 210 hours divided by 50 followers. In that period, it's four hours for every follower. So you can imagine some streams that might be four or five hours long, I'm only getting a single new follower. That can be a little bit soul destroying, but the way you've got to view it, it and this certainly helped me was that as long as the channel is growing, as long as you're not going 50, 100, 200 hours without any followers, it's happening and it starts to accumulate and self-compound itself. Now, bear in mind when you first go live as a Twitch streamer, you are one tiny little speck in a huge ocean of other people, of other gamers, of other games, so many content creators out there. It does take time. It's a natural expected thing. So your expectations should be quite low in terms of when and how quickly you expect to get to a certain level, okay? So for me, I didn't put any pressure on myself to get to 50 followers within you know, two days or seven days or 20 weeks or whatever it was. I just simply did the things that I was enjoying I tried to entertain people, tried to keep it fun. I played music, did all that kind of stuff. So yeah, but, but along the way, just to illustrate the point, 4.2 hours for every one follower is a, it's a bit of a grind. You know, you've got to work hard. You've got to, you've got to come back to the microphone. You've got to come back to the screen every day and be motivated to actually do it. And if you find that putting in that hard work is not for you, then perhaps actually streaming isn't for you. Uh, if you're finding that it feels more like work than it does 
uh, like like a hobby that you enjoy, you've got to enjoy it. You've got to really love what you're doing for this to work. One of the main things I really enjoyed was learning a load of new skills like video editing or like uh, learning about microphones or learning about um, kind of streams and how to add new modules and widgets and things like that. So that was a really like fun part for me and also discussing it with some of my friends was really good too. So. In terms of Max Viewers, during the period of my Max Viewer, again, it was on my final stream before I got affiliate. Uh, I had 20 viewers max. But just to illustrate the point, um, I was getting sort of pretty good at average views, even after the first week or two. Eight viewers there, seven Max Viewers. I hit that four or five times. Um, seven viewers again there. I hit 11 viewers a couple of times here, and then uh, 14, nine nine again. So quite a few times where the Max was being sort of pushed up, up, up and up and up and up. We look at uh, average views. Oh, we looked briefly at average views here. Again, there's a, just a steady, steady climb if you smooth that out where it goes up eventually there. So during this period, there were 63 times that I streamed in uh, essentially in a two month period. Now you can probably take away five or 10 of those because there may have been streams where it was 10 minutes and the stream cut off and I was testing something and so on and so forth. But still to illustrate the point, along with the hours, there was a lot of actual streams as well during that period. So it was a lot of hard work. Um, so you're not gonna get into this and then flick the switch and all of a sudden you've just got loads and loads of followers or, or loads and loads of viewers and, and concurrent viewers. It is it does take a lot of hard work uh, and it's not easy. To talk about being regular, um, there's no point in turning up for a stream one day and then three weeks later coming back to the microphone. That's not going to help you. Um, there's no consistency there. People don't know when you're going to be online. That you know, you're just not there long enough for it to really gather proper traction. I'm not saying it's impossible to stream very, very infrequently and build a good following. You can do that, but your chances of success if you are doing that are much, much lower because simply you're not around to even have the effect on the content, on the viewers and on the games that you're going to be interacting with. So being regular is, is a good thing. Um, a lot of people will say that you should have a schedule. You need to work to a schedule. I don't necessarily agree with that. I've not had a schedule once during this period and I found it's worked out absolutely fine for me so far. What's not good is to just go missing for huge periods of time without anyone knowing that you're going missing because people will want to know when you are going to be online, even roughly. So some people do like to work to a schedule, but that might not work for everyone. If you like, if you want to work to a schedule, then I would advise doing that. If you can't really be bothered to work to a schedule, or if you're not very good at working to a schedule, if maybe you've got a hectic lifestyle or something like that, that's actually not a problem at all. Don't sweat yourself to work to a schedule. What I did instead for, for me, I knew that I'd have sort of quite off and on periods of where I'd be streaming, but I knew that roughly most days I would be streaming sometime between six in the evening and 12 o'clock in the evening, and that I'll be streaming for most of that period. So I just simply told people when they asked, and I also put this on my banners and things like that, I stream most days six till 12 o'clock. That, that way people know that most evenings you're gonna be around, you're gonna be there. Um, so they'll look out for your notifications and so on and so forth. And I found that that worked really, really well. Now that might change in the future. I might change to a more strict schedule and you've got to kind of adapt as things change to yourself and lifestyle and so on. But don't listen to the people that say you have to have a schedule. You really don't have to have a schedule. As long as you give people a bit of an idea when you are likely to be online, that is at least helpful to people in terms of building a more stable, secure, longer term viewership, a more loyal viewership. Another thing that I did uh, throughout the whole process is I was constantly trying to seek and find new ways to do things. And I mean, literally every single day I would wake up and say, right, what are my priorities here today? What do I want to improve on the stream today? I would wake up and I would say, I want to improve the audio. I want to add some gifts to the stream. I want to do the overlays. I want to do some alert boxes, some more interaction. I want to set up some social media accounts. I want to get some branding done. So every single day, there's always something that you can improve slightly. And even if, even if you only improve your stream by half of 1% or just 1%, if you do that over a long period of time, that adds up to a, a really big amount of of improvement 
Um, what some people tend to do is do no improvements for a long period of time and then do one big massive improvement to the stream and that might work I'm not saying that approach wouldn't work but when you're first starting out you really need to if you want it to work you want to immerse yourself in it and try to look for lots of different things that you can improve almost all the time and it might only be a little thing that takes 10 minutes to implement or it could be something that takes an hour or two to implement it doesn't really matter as long as you're constantly seeking that improvement it's no good just sitting there and streaming to the same standard and the same quality when there are so many other people around you that may also be improving every day. So it's really important that you strive to try and improve your own stream. And that could be the technical stuff like the audio and the visuals and the production values. It could be your own self and your own charisma or trying new games or installing a new piece of hardware or software, all kinds of different things you can do. But there's always something that can be done to improve the stream. And to have the mentality that you're always going to wake up to improve the stream uh, is a really, really good positive mentality if you want to succeed uh, and obviously hit the affiliate status and obviously go beyond that and continue. Don't be afraid to put yourself out of your comfort zone as well. Um, there are a few times I, I played games that were a little bit off or the, I changed the format up quite significantly. I remember one time I asked my wife to jump into one of the streams with me. Um, I, I thought that would be quite fun and... She was a little bit daunted by it. I was a little bit kind of unsure about it, but the viewers absolutely loved it. We had a really good stream. We both enjoyed it. We spent some really nice time together. Um, you know, just doing different things and put yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone. It might be the way you introduce music or your introduction or your outro. It might be doing a raid for the first time. Uh, it may be the type of commentary that you do. It may be giving guidance on a game where maybe you don't think you have the place to give guidance to people will try it anyway the worst you can do is fail but you get the confidence to do it again a little bit better next time and there's no harm in that people get better by failing normally so putting yourself out of your comfort zone i found to be you know a really really important part of uh, the growth and a really important part of a learning process for streaming in general and also for getting yourself into the right mindset for improvement Hugely important one this I always used to watch back my streams even if it was for 10 minutes at the end of every stream I would or sometimes the following day I would watch back just 5 10 20 minutes of my stream the, the day before and say right What can I critique here? What can I make better? It sounds like a really obvious thing But just for the sake of 5 10 20 minutes you can get a lot of input about your own stream and how good or bad it actually went If there were key moments in the stream that you got a lot of interaction Maybe you might want to look back on those and look at why that was the case what what things went well what things did you do what did other people do what was good about the stream at that time or if there were periods where it went down maybe go back and reflect on those periods uh, look at them and ask yourself put yourself in the shoes of the viewer and say would I enjoy watching this if I was a viewer right now uh, and if the answer is no then it's a very easy next question isn't it the next question is okay well what things do I need to do to make it a little bit more sticky a bit more entertaining and a bit more useful or perhaps just a little bit more noisy and, and, and fun for the user for, for the viewers so I got a hell of a lot of insight from simply watching back the streams for 5 10 or 20 minutes every single time so I'm not suggesting that you go back and watch every single minute of your stream I don't think that's a very good use of your time if you've got the time to do it fine but if you don't have time to do that and most people will not have time to do that if they're also working hard on the stream itself then even just watching 5 to, to 10 or 20 minutes is a really, really insightful thing to do and should add a lot of value to your future streams. Make sure that you create clips and highlights of your stream. Uh, when you first start out streaming, you've got not really much content there or out there. You're sort of a shell of a, of a streamer. <laughs> you don't have the history. You don't have the kind of loyalty of people. You don't have loads of clips and, and all that. We sort of create your own history in the early days. The funny clips that have got loads of views, they don't just arrive out of nowhere. And you know, they, they build over time. These things build over time and the memes and the funniness and, and the silly kind of jokes that you might make with your viewers. It takes time to build those. So if you can create some content via clips and highlights, and don't be afraid of uploading th custom thumbnails to those. I don't really do thumbnails too much on my clips and highlights now, but when I was first starting out, I would, I would add clips and thumbnails to those highlights so that on the off chance that someone did see my channel, they might be more inclined to click into the clips or the highlights 
and actually see what I was about a little bit more. It just gave me a better chance of being able to be viewed by a higher number of people. And that's really, really important when you're already not being viewed by many people when you first start off. Anything that gives you the edge like that is going to help you as long as it's an organic thing and something that you're in control of and not just something that's kind of a, a, a facade or just a, a gimmick or a or clickbait kind of thing. I think this is quite a big one as well, uh, a really big one actually. Make sure that you actually do make a big deal when people follow you and raid you, things like that. I've seen a lot of streams where as a viewer, I've taken part in a raid in other people's streams. Uh, I've turned up and people are just kind of not that happy about the raid or they don't really make a big deal of it or, or you follow somebody uh, and there's no notification for one, which is a really important thing. Get the notifications right. That's a pretty easy thing to set up. And if you're not sure how to do it, you know, there are loads of tutorials out there, but also, you know, just if someone follows you and they're one of your first 50 followers, you really want to be making them feel good about following you because they could be the followers that get you up to the average viewership that you need to then get past the affiliate status or into the affiliate status. But also they, they may be the guys that then recommend other people to your channel. I've been really, really lucky that the viewers that I've got, many of them have stuck around and become long-term viewers and quite a few of those almost almost all of my long-term viewers have brought new people to my stream so that wouldn't be possible if i was either alienating them or not making a big deal of them but th the most important thing to note about this is that you're not just doing it for the follow or doing it for the views you're actually doing it because you enjoy the interaction you enjoy spending time with those people and you enjoy the content and you enjoy having fun if you're doing it purely and only for the follows and for the growth and nothing else people can smell when when you're bullshitting it's it's just human nature you know when someone isn't authentic and the credibility just is not there there's something there's something in your eyes there's something in your speech that just is not there if it's not authentic so you know, try not to do stuff just for the sake of those reasons, uh, the means to an end reasons. Do them because of all the other reasons, like you enjoy it or, you know, or like you want to make the, the other person feel good or you want to feel good or whatever else. Uh, or maybe you just want to have a laugh with your viewers as well, which is also good. I would also say, um, I feel like this is a, a fairly big one as well, actually. Most of these have been quite, quite big ones, but don't be afraid of being a little bit cheeky, uh, being a little bit kind of... Um, making people think twice about what they say to you as well. Make jokes that are a little bit weird and, and quirky and stuff like that. Show off your own personality. You know, if you're if you're a more chilled person, don't try and be not chilled just because just because your audience you think your audience might like you to be a little bit more hyper. Because actually, it's going to be really difficult to maintain that unless you actually want to be actively not a chill person, in which case that's very different. But Or if you're too hyper, don't try and chill yourself down a bit just to satisfy the audience. Like The best way that you're going to enjoy what you're doing and, and, and therefore the, the growth be genuinely organic, genuinely good growth, solid growth that will see you get um, lots of viewers in the process is simply be yourself. And everyone says that. They say, oh, oh just be yourself, just be yourself. There's a reason for that. There's a reason why people say that is because it's sustainable. When you're trying to be yourself and you're just normal, you're just you, you can sustain that. If you're trying to be someone completely different, maybe you might be like Dr. Disrespect and you can sustain that for a long period of time in character. Maybe you can do that. It might work for someone, but for most people that simply will not work. And also the credibility is a, a big issue there. If you're, if you're constantly trying to hype up um, and you're not being yourself again I think people are, are, are quite well tuned in to that so be yourself be a bit cheeky uh, you know be, be honest with your viewers they know that you're not you know you've not sat there with half a million followers and, and 10,000 viewers they know that and they don't care nobody cares nobody's coming to the stream and saying I ju I'm judging this person I'm judging this person People judge you based on the content and you and your organicness and your likability. They don't really judge you all too much on the numbers. It just simply doesn't matter. When you're in a stream and you know that that is a, a sort of a so-called smaller streamer, it just doesn't become a factor anymore. So you don't need to justify it. You don't need to pretend. You don't need to like falsify that you're a bigger streamer than you are. Just embrace it. People enjoy it. Uh, but be honest with your audience. Tell them that you're taking it serious. Tell them that you're trying to build an audience. Tell them that you want to try some new things, but also seek the feedback from your viewers. Guys, let me know what's working well. Let me know what's not working well. The worst thing you can do is shut yourself off 
from what would otherwise be quite constructive feedback that could help your stream along. So even in a way, you need to listen to the people that are, that are talking most, in a way, most negatively about your stream because they're the ones that are likely to give you the most insight about what's going on. Someone that's sat there quietly getting annoyed about something but not mentioning it, they're, in a way, that's a bit more dangerous because they're just persevering with something that you could improve probably quite easily, but they're not giving you the opportunity to do that because they're not telling you that that is something that you can improve on. You've got to certainly got to embrace and get some thick skin and embrace the feedback that people will inevitably give you. The final thing I'm going to just go into is I'm, I'm going to just extend this graph on here a little bit more uh, to include the extra month. Um, well, it's not even a month. It's another couple of weeks uh, to the 13th today, which is the date of this video. And hopefully you can see that this is a, you know, a little bit more densely packed than it is over here. So the growth has continued. I've, I've now gone from 50 followers in seven weeks to 80, more than 80 followers in, in the next 10 days after that. Um, so the growth has actually continued to almost accelerate as the more followers compound themselves and people get a little bit more uh, used to my style, but also as some of the more of the changes that I've made have then uh, come into effect on my stream as well. So. Um, don't worry that it takes a day or two or three days to get an extra one follower. That doesn't matter. Everyone knows that the first 50, the first 100, the first 500 followers on Twitch are the hardest followers to get. And that's okay. That's absolutely okay. If you can't handle waiting a day, two, three days for that extra one follower, then you possibly shouldn't be in this. I'm lucky enough here in the two months that I've been doing this, it's two days more, two or three days uh, more than two months that I've been doing it. I've actually started earning money from this and I'm not even I'm not even bothered about the monetary side of it yet. I just want to actually help people and entertain people and, and have some fun in the process. The fact that I'm able to actually earn some money from it as well is, is just, I'm just very lucky that that is the case. Um, I just want to kind of close by saying that the, the average viewers here now hitting regularly hitting sixes, sevens, fives, 6.1, that's quite a strong average viewership considering the 50 to 80 followers that I've got. The percentage of people actually tuning in and coming back from those followers is far, far more important than the actual follower number itself. So to put this into perspective, I'd rather have, for example, rather have 500 view followers and 400 of them tune in all the time than have half a million followers and 200 of them tune in. Because you may look like you're a big streamer if you've got half a million followers, but the reality of it is if people are not coming back, people are not tuning in and people are not enjoying you and your content. Remember, you're the main star of your own stream, right? If people are not enjoying you and your content, then you should take that personally, you know, because actually it's a little bit false if you've just got the follower numbers but without the viewership to underpin it as well. I'm, I'm kind of seeing this as more of a long game thing. Uh, I want to see where I am in six months, in two years, in five years. Um, but in the short term, I'm encouraged by the steady, steady, consistent growth that I'm getting. I'd be worried if the growth just came to a halt and there were long periods of time, weeks or even months where I got no real growth at all or even declines. That would be something that would be I would probably take personally and it may make me think twice about whether I want to do Twitch or, or streaming at all. But as long as you're getting that steady increase all the time, particularly if it's starting to accelerate as well. So obviously one follower can only be one follower against one more follower. But if you've got 80 followers, one follower is a much smaller percentage. How those numbers interact in the long term, uh, you can take your own view on. But as long as there is growth, then hopefully you're able to see that, absorb that, enjoy it still, and you know look at the long game rather than the short game. So in terms of sort of once you've hit affiliate, I would recommend to keep trying to improve your stream, absolutely. Keep trying out new games, uh, games that you enjoy and like the look of. Take more feedback from your viewers, especially the ones that have been there since the start. Because remember, they'll have seen all of the changes and they'll know what's worked and what hasn't worked on your stream. So you should value the feedback of the people that have been there the longest. Don't be afraid to make people mods in that process because that will give them a little bit more fun things to, to play around with and they can actually make some of those positive changes yourself. And also make sure you're watching plenty of content and tutorials on YouTube uh, and other platforms because that will help you to improve things by adding new widgets and new overlays and various other things like that. 
this is a pretty open and frank discussion for me and I've not really done any videos like this before uh, but I wanted to do it because I, I hope it hel helps people but I'm sure there'll be some people looking at this and going wow it took him you know it took him six weeks seven weeks to get to 50 followers why is he doing a video like this I don't really care because I know that the, the followers that I do have do actually watch the videos that I put, put out there or they watch the streams that I put out there and that means more to me than just having 50 followers in one day because anyone can get to 50 followers in one day if you beg for it hard enough and that isn't it's not good quality content it's not good quality viewership and it's not going to be healthy for your stream in the long run hopefully you found this useful if you have feel free to drop by my twitch.tv forward slash machine dana or uh, subscribe on youtube otherwise take it easy and happy streaming guys <laughs>